Chorus frogs can be found in Canada from Quebec west to BC and up into the Northwest Territories in the Yukon. But how can we tell chorus frogs apart from the roughly two dozen frog species found across the country? Chorus frogs are about the size of a large grape and vary from green-gray to brownish, but the best way to tell them apart from other frogs is by the three dark stripes down their backs, which can be broken into blotches, by their white upper lip, and by the dark line that runs through each eye. Both species of chorus frogs found in Canada, the boreal chorus frog and the western chorus frog, have these features and look very much alike. It's not always easy to spot a chorus frog, so the best way to know if they're around is by listening for them. These little singers start to call for mates in very early spring for about two weeks. Different frog species make different sounds, and the chorus frog's call is very unique. It sounds much like a fingernail running along the teeth of a comb. They're so loud that a group of them can be heard from almost a kilometer away. So, we know what to look and listen for, but where are they likely to be? It depends on the season. These small frogs will be invisible during the coldest months as they lay hidden underground or under debris. In fact, the chorus frog is one of a few creatures that can freeze in the winter and then thaw without any ill effects. As soon as the snow melts, they will collect in nearby water bodies to call for mates. They can be heard both day and night. The shallow water they choose is generally still and can include damp meadows, marshes, drainage ditches, and vernal pools in woodlands, fields, or even urban areas. Temporary bodies of water which dry up for the summer are preferred as they do not house predatory fish. Once mating is over, chorus frogs will return to the cover of nearby natural growth. So the best time to locate these small frogs is definitely early spring. The male frogs form the loud choruses they're known for calling for interested females to mate with. After mating, a female could lay 500 to 1500 eggs in masses of 20 to 300 attached to underwater vegetation. The eggs will hatch within a few weeks and those tadpoles will finish transforming into frogs by midsummer and then join other adult frogs on land in surrounding areas. Chorus frogs will eat different foods during different stages. Tadpoles will eat algae or other microscopic organisms, froglets will dine on small insects and other invertebrates, and adult frogs will hunt for larger bugs. Also depending on what stage they're at, chorus frogs are on the menu of many other creatures, including mink, shrews, herons, snakes, raccoons, shrikes, and skunks. Because chorus frogs lead a double life between water and land, and because their skin is very absorbent, these little amphibians are among the first to be affected by toxins in the environment, human development in a natural area, the introduction of invasive species, and climate change. The chorus frog is considered at risk in some areas of Canada because of these threats. Many of us know to protect lakes, rivers, and oceans, but we need to remember that other less obvious wet areas also provide critical habitat to creatures like the chorus frog. And remember, no matter where you live in Canada, wildlife is close by, so get out and see it.